In this example, what we do is we use SQL Server, and we actually use something called a user-defined function. It's kind of like a stored procedure, but what it does is instead of doing a task or returning a record set, it's going to return a value. Uh, but it's something that we can use later on several times. What this one does, it's called prepad, is simple. You're basically going to pass in a string, and if the string isn't long enough, meaning the length of its characters isn't up to a certain amount, it's going to take a character, a specific one that you tell it, and it's going to pre-pad it or pre-pend it or basically stuff it in the front of that string as many times until the length of the string is equal to the length that you want. Um, for example, the month January might be represented as one, but if you wanted to justify it correctly in the name of a file or something like that, you might want to call it zero one. That's why you would prepend something. In this case, in this function, basically, it takes three parameters. The first one is the string that you're working with. The second one is, how long do you want it to be at the end of the day? And last but not least, if it isn't long enough, what character are we going to be putting in front of it? And in this case, we're actually defaulting it to a zero, but it could be a spate, it could be a star, it could be whatever we want. Um, and it returns a varic error. And basically, this just loops through as many times until our string is as big as it needs to be. But the most important thing is, we already have this code. We don't have to write this every single time. We just have to basically write the word prepad when we need to use this. Here's how this would work, and here's when you would probably want to use something like this. What I've done here is I'm declaring a temp table, not a temp table, but actually a table variable. It has its own ID, it has a product ID, which is a made up thing, a product and a location. And then all I'm doing is I'm inserting into this, uh, this table variable, and then I'm going to do a select from it. Now notice what happens when I do this. Here we have a company, and we'll say for the sake of argument, there's a site in New York, there's one down in Kentucky, and then there's one across the pond. Um, they've got different products, and if I have to draw you a map, you could probably figure what all these products have in common. I'm not going to come out and say it. Um, but in any event, notice the product IDs. We've got 010, 020, 025, 045. Then we have these other ones. It looks like in Europe they do things differently, and it's just 11, 12, 129. And just for the sake of argument, what the customer wants to do is really line all of these up so that the numbers are all in order. See, I'm ordering this by the first field, by product ID, except because these aren't really numbers, but because they're alpha characters, zero always comes before one. It doesn't care how big that number is. That's really the number 10, which should come before 11 and 12, and then should come 20. But it doesn't work like that because this is a text field. So basically what we have to do is find an easy way to add zeros in front of these, 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 these terms that only have two characters. Well, how do we do that? Well, what we can do is just add a couple of lines of code or make a few changes to this. So instead of ordering it by the first field, we're going to order it by the second field, which doesn't exist yet because we just added this. What we're going to be doing is calling, um, we're going to be selecting prod ID in the second field as well. But notice where it says dbo.prepad. We're basically calling the function that we created. We're calling this um, user-defined function, and it's going to do all of this stuff every time it's doing a select on this field. What it's going to be doing is it's going to be passing in the prod ID, then the number 3, and then a 0. What that means is it's going to pass in a value from the table, uh, three for the length, and then we didn't even have to put in this last part, but we did, but it would have come to zero anyway. In any event, when we do this, you're going to see the difference between instead of having 10, 20, 25, and then 11 and 12 down here, it's going to straighten everything out for us. Now that we did this, and by the way, sorted, that just that's what I'm renaming this field so it has a name. Notice here, because I'm ordering it by that now, <coughs> even though that says 11 and that says 12, what we're doing is we're basically changing what that field looks like on the way out. So now it's 010, 011, 012. So basically, we're able to put everything in the proper order that we wanted. So everybody in the company is happy now. But the way that we did that is we took this user-defined function, which isn't really part of SQL Server. It's something that we made called prepad. It's just basically this simple. I mean, you're just basically looping through it however many times until it makes it as big as it wants to be. Um, and in this case, it's just sticking a zero in front of this guy and that guy. But because it's a user-defined function that lives over here, you make it one time, you use it a million times after that, it makes this code over here really clean. All you're doing is calling the function. 
you don't have to call you don't have to write all of this stuff over here in this query. So basically it's a lot easier on the eyes, it keeps it really clean, and basically that's how you would use a user-defined function in SQL Server.